everyone. Hey. We um, watched Stranger Things. We did. And, and if you haven't seen all of it, we might spoil a little of it. Fair warning. If you have seen all of it, you're probably like us. You were like, wow, most television shows are very yeah. bad, and this was very good. What an amazing show. That came out of nowhere. Netflix has this weird strategy of advertising some of its shows very much, you know, like mm. Orange is the New Black, and then they'll just mm. drop these other shows out there and just be like, well, let's see how this one does. And Stranger yeah. Things, I hadn't heard anything about at all. I just happened to turn on Netflix one day and see it there. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. It looks like an old Drew yeah. Struzan poster. It's the first time a show has turned up like an email. Most mystery shows are very bad. They like mystery box you and that's all. They yeah, because, and like yeah. this one was a complete story. They did the exact opposite of like what J.J. Abrams would do. First of all, it's a very short season. It's only eight episodes long, which yeah. is crazy. That's, eight hours. You're in, you're out, yeah. boom, done. And yeah. when you go back and watch it, the mystery's thought out. Like they clearly knew what it was going to be from the get go. Yeah, which they is like out a TV right. story. They knew what it amazing. was. How amazing! Okay, so obviously a big talking point about uh, the show is all the '80s stuff. They cram all these little '80s references in there by the kids having really improbable posters. posters. Yeah. <laughs> like they are whoever runs the Hawkins, Indiana movie poster store. Right, is like on just point. Killing it. Mike has the Dark Crystal. Radical. Like yeah, well, I mean it's awesome, but it's a movie that bombed. That would have been a struggle. <laughs> That would have been like his Red Rider BB gun for Christmas gift. Like that would have been the only gift his parents got him because right. they would have had to scour the goddamn earth. The title font is the font from a run of Stephen King's books. Oh, yeah, in. that kind of like moves in. Those are that's that Stephen King font from uh, some of his books in the 80s. Um, yeah. And then apparently the chapter heading fonts for each episode are from the original Dungeons and Dragons uh, manual. Like that's just what attention to detail. Yeah. Just selecting a nice font that also is thematic. There's three different movies going on. Like you have the teens like Nancy and Steve and Jonathan who are in like a straight up slasher horror movie where it's like this yeah. monster is eating all the teenagers. You've got uh, the chief and Winona Ryder who are in like this shadowy government thriller movie. And then you got the kids who are just doing, eat. they're having an E.T. And it's only when yeah. they all sort of come together to combine those movies for the, the bigger picture is when they are able to actually, each group is able to actually succeed in what they were trying to do. This is the first thing since Drive where if you just chill and listen to the soundtrack, you kind of suddenly have the vibe of the film. Yeah. Like, I drove home from Drive listening to the Drive music I and it was the, the best. Thing. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, now, awesome. they, I'm now I've done the really same good. thing with, with Stranger Things. Just like on adventures now. Yeah. When I now I'm just, I'm hopping on my bike. Alex and I rode here on bikes. We're going to leave on bikes. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have an ET. It's gonna be great. I hope those kids don't want the bikes back. It's a it's a trope from Stephen King stories where the bullies are just crazy murderers. He's got the crazy bullies in it. Uh, he's got the yeah. crazy bullies in Sometimes They Come Back. Those movies are both about bullies that kill people. Like they just bring casually switchblades to school to kill people. Right. It's weird because we have the bullies in this show. Like the first time we see him, it's real like low stakes. Or like, hey, they say something vaguely racist. They get dust and like, hey, do the arm thing. And he just kind of does like this double jointed thing. I'm like, ew. And then they high five each other. I was like, well, that. They got, they got up pretty light bullying standards. Yeah. And then like two episodes later, he pulls out a switchblade and tells Mike to jump into the canyon to kill himself. And other bully really does not have the strength of his convictions. He's just like, hey, hey, bully friend, that I, I am opposed to this, yeah. but also go ahead. The bullying when I grew up was just get punched and kicked and, and teased sometimes, but nobody brought a f***ing knife. Like that, to, I would have not made it through elementary school if <laughs> bullies oh, no. brought switchblades. I wouldn't have gone. Okay, so the hair in this show, I feel like, could almost be its own show. Hawkins, Indiana is a town with an amazing movie poster store. It has yeah. a really lovely like hall of records where they find the microfilm. It's like a really great old Carnegie Very kind of building. Very complete Also, library. the hairdresser in that town is just clean, Phenomenal. is just killing it. Everybody except Winona Ryder has some really choice hair. But like, she's the one person who's missing out on Steve's soaring cathedral of hair. He starts out like normal, like he's just got like the 70s long hair. <laughs> and then as the series progresses, I feel like this is like a fun Highlights Magazine treat for the viewers. Yeah. His hair gets progressively taller. Like, yeah. I think that's yeah. like a prank that they were doing. <laughs> Like, let's see how, how, how taller we can stack this shit on his head before yeah. anyone says anything. Right. And nobody ever said anything because they never stop. And Barb also has Barb, great hair. Barb's got solid hair. Great glasses, great, and uh, is the character I would have been in that era. I think most of us who are fans of Stranger Things would have probably been Barb. Barb's blown up on like Tumblr and, and Facebook. And she's, yes. 
the most memed character of this show. We feel for Barb because she's just got she's got nothing. She's just telling Nancy to stop. <laughs> she's stop like, doing yeah, that. Yeah, you're you're kind of you're kind of screwing up. And then Nancy like drags her along with, which is like standard shitty teenager behavior. It's like you force yeah. your friend to go to a party that they don't really want to go to. Yep. We've all, I, most of us have probably either have, done that or have yeah. that had done to us. Yep. Second one. In Nancy's defense, usually that doesn't end with somebody being killed by a f***ing monster. But that's totally what happens in Stranger Things. She's also sitting on that dive board. That's like the one place in Hawkins, Indiana, where if you get sucked to the upside down, you can't escape. You're just in a in pit where you're gonna get eaten. Upside down booger tree world. Everyone in town is like, oh yeah, of course she was unhappy and ran away. Yeah. Like no one really investigates right. it. This model student who has like a nice friendship of course she caught a bus and ran away. Look at her look at her glasses. Look at her terrible slacks. Yeah. There's there are multiple assemblies for Will Byers. Yeah, Will goes missing, everybody loses their minds. Like nobody gives a yeah. shit about Barb. <laughs> kind of one of the only plot holeish moments I noticed in the show is Nancy goes back to the house. She see she goes back to Steve's house. She, she starts poking around the backyard looking for Barb and the monster like, you know, comes scuttling by and she's like, "Oh, you know, plain striding demon. And he wasn't there to ambush her or else he would've just grabbed her because that's what he does all the rest of the times. Yeah. So what was the monster doing just hanging out in the woods behind Steve's house? What I don't know, the... maybe he got like the rest of Steve's leftover beers and was just shotgunning him in the woods back there. <laughs> maybe he was more scared than Nancy was. Maybe he was like, oh sh like trying to hide the right. fact that he's been drinking since 10 a.m. The season ends, wraps up its story, but there's also still some threads because it is a show yes. and it's, we're gonna have and what happens next season? Let's Will's coughing up slugs. He seems like he's like resigned to it. Like he's like, yeah, what are you gonna do? Topper made some kind of deal with, with the creepy feds. And, and he's leaving food for L. Pro it's gotta be L, right? It's it Eggos. probably is. Yeah, cause, there's, cause the box has snow on top of it, which means it's been there for a while, but also it's empty, which means somebody's been taking the food right, out of it. Right, somebody's been taking the food, so, so. probably L. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, ho I hope it's just this good. I hope these Duffer Brothers fellas just like keep channeling Stephen King and Steven Spielberg and the, the two Steve, Steves. Steve's hair and just combining the, the powers the of the Steves, Steves yeah, all the to Steves. form great shows. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the comments, talk about Steve's hair, man. Yeah. Where's it gonna go? Yeah. How high can it get? What new How direction impressive? is Steve's hair gonna go in on season two? What will Steve's hair's journey be in season two of Stranger Things? I can't wait. Yeah. I hope if he goes into the upside down, I'll bet he has like regular hair. Like that's the yeah, depressing like part of the. He's just like Eisenhower hair. Because his hair is too wonderful to exist there. <laughs>